Having conceived of our purpose, we should mentally mark out straight pathways to our achievements, looking neither to the right nor to the left. Doubts and fears should rigorously be excluded. They are disintegrating elements, and they break up the straight line of effort, rendering it crooked and ineffective and useless. Thoughts of doubt and fear never accomplish anything, and never can. They always lead to failure. Purpose, energy, power to do, and all strong thoughts cease when doubt and fear creep in. You need to remember your purpose, your energy, your power to do. This will do springs from the knowledge that which we can do. Doubt and fear are the great enemies of knowledge, and those who encourage them, who do not slay them, thwart themselves into every step. Those who have conquered doubt and fear have conquered failure. This in every thought is the allied with power, and in all difficulties are bravery, where bravery is met and wisely overcome. Their purpose are seasonably planted, and they bloom and bring forth fruit that does not fall prematurely to the ground. Thought, allied fearlessly to the purpose, becomes creative force. Those who know this are readily and ready to become something higher, better, stronger than mere bundles of wavering thoughts and fluctuating sensation. Those who do this align their thoughts fearlessly with their purpose, become the conscious and intelligent wielders of their mental powers. Thought as a factor in achievement. All achievements, whether it's business, intellectual, or spiritual world, are the result of definite, directed thoughts. All achievement is the result of definite, directed thoughts. All that you achieve and all that you fail to achieve is the direct result of your own thoughts. In just the ordered universe, where loss of equilibrium would mean total destruction of individual responsibility, must be absolute. Your weakness and strength, your purity and impurity are your own, and not anyone else's. They are brought by yourself, and not by another. They can only be altered by yourself, never by anyone else. The condition is also your own, not anyone else's. Your suffering and your happiness are evolved from within. As you think, so you are. As you continue to think, so you remain. Stronger people cannot help the weaker unless the weaker are willing to be helped. And, even themselves, weaker must become strong of themselves. Even then, the weaker must become strong of themselves, and they must, by their own efforts, develop the strengths that they admire in others. Only we ourselves can alter and alter our conditions. Both oppressors and those who are oppressed are coordinated in cooperating in ignorance. And while seeming to afflict each other in the reality, afflicting themselves, a perfect knowledge perceived the action of the law in the weakness of the oppressed and the misapplied power of the oppressor. A perfect love, seeing the suffering that both states entail, condemns neither. A perfect compassion embraces both the oppressor and the oppressed. Those who have conquered weakness and have put away all selfish thoughts belong neither to oppressor or oppressed. They are free. We can only rise, conquer, and achieve by lifting up our thoughts. We can only remain weak and adject and miserable by refusing to lift up our thoughts. Before we can achieve anything, even worldly things, we must lift our thoughts above extreme self-indulgence. We do not have to give all selfishness in order, give up all selfishness in order to succeed, but a portion of it must at least be given up. If our dominant thoughts are those of indulgence, then we can neither think clearly nor plan methodically. We cannot find and develop our Latin resources, and so we fail in our undertaking. Not having commenced and effectively control of our thoughts, we are not in a position to control the affairs and to adopt serious responsibilities. We are not fit to act independently and stand alone, but we are limited only by the thoughts from which we choose. There can be no progress, no achievement without a certain degree of sacrifice, and our worldly success will be directly proportional to the degree from which we overcome selfish, indulgent thoughts and fix our mind on the development of our plans and the strengthening of our resolution and self-reliance. And the higher we lift ourselves, the more upright and righteous and idealistic we become. The greater to be in our success and the more blessed and enduring we will be about our achievements. The universe does not favor the greedy, the dishonest, the vicious, even though on the mere surface it may seem appear to do so. It helps the honest, the, magnum, the magnumous, the virtuous. All the great teachers of the ages have declared this in verifying, in, ver in varying forms, and to prove knowing it, we have but to persist of making ourselves more virtuous by lifting up our thoughts. Intellectual achievements are the results of thoughts consecrated, consecrated to the search for knowledge, or the beautiful and true in life and nature. Such achievements may be sometimes connected with the vanity and ambition, but they are not the outcomes of those characteristics. They are natural outgrowths of a long and endurous effort, and the pure and unselfish thoughts. 
Spiritual achievements are the consummation of holy aspirations. Those who live constantly in the conception of noble and lofty thoughts, who dwell upon all that is pure and unselfishness, will, will surely have the sun reaches its zenith and the moon is full, become wise and noble in character, and rise into a position of influence and blessedness. Achievement of whatever kind of crown or effort or diadem of thought. By the aid of well-directed thought, resolution, self-control, and righteousness, we ascend. By the aid of laziness, lack of self-control, and confusion of thought, we descend. We may rise to high success in the world and even to lofty altitudes of spiritual realms and then descend into weakness and wretchedness by allowing arrogant, selfish, and corrupt thoughts to take possession of us. Victory is attained by right thought and can only be maintained by watchfulness. Many give way when succeed is assured and rapidly fall back into failure. All achievements, whether in the business, intellectual, or spiritual world, are the result of definite directed thoughts and are governed by the same law and are all in the same method. The only difference that lies in the object of attainment. Those who would accomplish little must sacrifice little. Those who want to achieve much must sacrifice much. Those who would attain highly must sacrifice greatly. 6. Visions and Ideals Those who cherish a beautiful vision, a lofty ideal is their hearts, will only day will one day realize it. Those who cherish a beautiful vision, a lofty ideal in their hearts, will one day realize it. The dreamers are the saviors of the world. As the visible world is sustained by the invisible, so humanity, through all its trials and mistakes and sufferings, is nourished by the beautiful visions of its solitary dreamers. Humanity cannot forget its dreamers. It cannot let their ideals fade and die. It lives in them. It's known as the realities from which we'll one day see and know. Composers, sculptors, painters, poets, prophets, sage, these are the makers of the afterworld, the architects of heaven. The world is beautiful because they have lived. Without them, laboring, humanity would perish. Those who cherish a beautiful vision, a lofty ideal in their hearts, will one day realize Columbus cherished a vision of another world, and he discovered it. Copernicus fostered the vision of a multiplicity of worlds and a wider universe, and he revealed it. Buddha beheld the vision of spiritual worlds and stainly, of a stainless beauty and perfect peace, and he entered into it. Cherish your visions, cherish your ideals, cherish your music that stirs in your heart, the beauty that forms in your mind, the loveliness that drapes your finest thoughts. For out of them will grow the delightful conditions, all heavenly environments of these, if you remain true to them, and the world will at last be built. To desire is to obtain, to aspire is to achieve. Shall our basest, and our basest desire receive the fullest measure of gratification, and our purest aspirations starve for lack of sustenance? Such is not the law of universe." Such, such is not the law of universe. Such a condition of things can never obtain. Ask, and you will receive. Dream lofty dreams, and as you dream, so shall you become. Your visions is the promise from which you shall one day be. Your ideal is the prophecy of which you shall have last to unveil. Your ideal is the prophecy of what you shall at last unveil. The greatest achievement was first, at, for a time, a dream. The oak sleeps in the egg corn. The bird waits in the egg. And the highest vision of the soul is wakening angel stirs. And the highest vision of the soul, awakening, awaking angel stirs. Dreams are the seedlings of realities. Your circumstances may be uncongenial, but they shall not go and remain, but perceive an ideal and strive to reach it. You cannot travel within and stand still without. Here was a young woman, here was a young man, both hard pressed by poverty and labor, confined long hours in unhealthy workshops, uneducated and lacking all the arts of refinement. But they both dream. They dream of better things. They think of intelligence and refinement and of grace and beauty, and they conceive of mentally building up in ideal conditions of life, and the visions of a wider liberty and a larger scope. Take possessions of those thoughts and unrest urges that pushes them into action, and they utilize all their spare time and means, small though they seem to be, and so they are, to the development of their Latin powers and resources. Very soon their minds have become altered that the workshop can no longer hold them. It has become so out of harmony with their mentality and it falls into their lives as, the garment, as, a, as, a, as a garment is cast aside. And with the growth of opportunities and the fit of scope of their expanding powers, they pass out of it, they pass out of it forever. Years later we'll see them full grown adults. We'll find each of them in unique ways master of certain forces and of their mind in ways of wielding the world wide influence of almost unequalled powers. And in their hands they hold the cords, the cords of gigantic responsibilities. They speak in lives and their lives are charged. Men and women hung upon their words and remold their characters and sunlike hits sunlike and they become fixed in luminous centers around which innumerable destinies revolve. They have realized the visions of their youth. They have become one with their ideals, and you too, youthful reader, will realize vision, not the idle wish of your heart, be it based of beautiful or a mixture of both. 
will always be a gratitude and you will gravitate towards from which you secretly most love into the hands will be placed an exact result of your own thoughts you will receive from which you can earn no more no less you will receive from which you can earn whatever your present environment may be you will fall in remain on rise of the thoughts of your vision and your ideals you will become as small as your controlling desire or you become as great as your dominant aspiration in the beautiful words of stanton kirkman davis you may be keeping accounts and presently you shall walk out the door that for so long has seemed to you as a barrier of your ideals and you now shall find yourself before an audience and the pen still behind your ear the ink stains on your fingers and then there shall pour out a torrent of your inspiration you may be driving sheep and you shall wander into the city bucolic and open mouthed and you wander under an intrepid guidance of a spirit into a studio of a master and after a time he shall say i have nothing more to teach you and know you have to become the master who did so recently dream of great things while driving sheep you shall lay down the saw and the plane to take upon yourself in the regeneration of the world the thoughtless the ignorant and the lazy seeing only the apparent effects of things and not the things themselves talk of luck and of fortune and chance seeing someone grow rich they say how lucky they are observing another becomes a renowned scholar they acclaim how highly favored they are and noting the saintly character and wide influence of others they remark how lucky aids them at every turn they do not see the trials and the failure struggles that these men and women have voluntarily encountered in order to gain their experience they have no knowledge of those sacrifices that those others have made and the undaunted efforts that they have put forward and the faith that they have exercised from which they might overcome the apparently insurmountable and realize the visions of their hearts they do not know the darkness and the heartaches they only see the light and the joys they call it luck they do not see the long and arduous journey but only see the pleasant goal and the call of good fortune they do not understand the process but only perceive the result and call it chance in all human affairs there is efforts and there are results and the strength of effort is measured of the result it's not of chance so-called gifts powers materials intellectual and spiritual possessions are the fruits of effort they are thoughts and completed objects accomplished visions realized the vision that you glorify in your mind the ideal that you enthrone in your heart this is what will build your life and what you should build your life by and this and of this you will become seven serenity the more tranquil we become the greater our success our influence our power for good calmness of mind is one of the beautiful jewels of wisdom it is the result of a long patient effort and self-control its presence is indicated of a ripened experience and it's more than an ordinary knowledge of laws and operations of thought we become calm in the measure that we understand ourselves as thought evolving beings for such knowledge necessitates the understanding of others as a result of thought and as we develop a right understanding and see more and more clearly the internal relations of things by the action of cause and effect we cease to fuss and fume and worry and grieve and remain poised and steadfast and serene people who are calm having learned how to govern themselves know how to adapt themselves to others and these others in turn revere the calm people's spiritual strength and feel that they can learn from them and rely upon them the more tranquil we become the greater of our success our influence our power for good even the most ordinary salespeople for example will find their business prosperity increase as they develop a greater self-control of an equini of an equanimity for people who will always prefer to deal with people whose manners is pleasant and steady strong calm people are always loved and revered they are like shading giving trees in a thirsty land or a sheltering rock in a storm who does not love a tranquil heart a sweet-tempered balanced life it does not matter whether it's rain or shines or which we can change those possessions these blessings but they are always sweet serene and calm that equisite poise of character that we call serenity is the last lesson of our culture it is the flowering of life the fruitage of our soul it's precious as wisdom it's more to be desired than gold yes than even fine gold how insignificant mere money seeking looks is comparison with the serene life a life that dwells in the ocean of truth beneath the waves beyond the reach of the tempest and the internal and the eternal calm how many people do we know who soar their lives who ruin all the sweet and beautifully of explosion tempers who destroy their poise of character and make bad blood it is the question whether the great majority of people do not ruin their lives and mar their happiness by lack of understanding and self-control how few people we meet in life who are well balanced who have the exquisite poise that in characteristics of a finished character to have a poise and the exquisite poise of a characteristic of a finished character yes humanity surges with uncontrolled anger in 
Tumultuous with ungoverned grief and blown about by anxiety and doubt, only the truly wise, whose thoughts are controlled and purified, make the minds and make the winds and the storms of the soul obey them. Tempest-tossed souls, wherever may be, under whatever conditions you may live, know this. In oceans of life, the isles of blessedness are smiling, and the sunny shore of your ideal awaits your coming. Keep your hand firmly upon the helm of thought, and the ship of your soul reclines into the commander-master. You're the master, and he does not, and he does but sleep. But wake him. Self-control is strength. Right thought is mastery. Calmness is power. Say to your heart, peace, be still. Peace, be still. About the author, James Allen was born in the Sester, England, 1864. Because of family difficulties following his father's death, he had to leave school when he was 15 and worked for several British manufacturers until 1902. When he decided to write full-time after he finished his first book, From Poverty to Power, he moved to Ilfracombe on England's southwest coast and lived there until his death of 1912. He wrote 19 books in all. As You Can Think is his acknowledged masterpiece. As You Thinketh, As a Man Thinketh. James Allen.